used to be called Loki. Uh, Loki was the crypto, Loki was the organization, and we had this you know, Loki Autonomous Government Foundation, LAG. It was a very fitting name for such an organization. <laughs> Not many people even understand how Facebook Messenger works or WhatsApp works or any of this sort of stuff works. I would just say as a user, um, all you really need to know is that we can't get access to your messages. You have this channel with up to 99 people or 100 people, and every time you join the channel, you exchange encryption keys, and if you have multi-device, it does it again. If one person's offline, they don't get new keys. I don't know if we'd add Bitcoin straight away. Like maybe. I would say it is of interest. I like, I love crypto. I had a little bit of money on FTX, but I, but it's completely my fault. Yeah, I was trying to recruit. So just the, all my, all my, um, my buy orders that, that got that got taken. So nobody understands money. Nobody understands the economy. And you chat to someone who's like study economics and they'll tell you that you're a fool because you didn't study economics. And then you ask them questions and they're like, oh, that's, you know, who knows? Who knows? Welcome to Get Off Zero. Uh, today we've got a very special guest and an old friend from the old Bitcoin center. Um, we've, yeah, I've had a, some pretty cool podcasts just recently, but I think this one's going to be extra special. Um, talking about Session App today, which is actually my favorite and go-to like chat app. I absolutely love it. And uh, Chris has been working with them for a number of years. Um, did you want to tell us a bit about yourself, Chris, what you're working on and, and um, Session App and anything else you're doing at the moment? Well, thanks, Kieran. Absolutely delightful to see you, by the way. Thanks for having me on here. Um, Kieran and I met, you know, a few years ago, and it's it only brings me joy and delight. So, you know, always, <laughs> always happy to do anything you want to do. Always keen. Um, all right. So uh, I'm the CEO of, you know, Session, the organization, the OPTF and Oxen, this sort of big sort of um, cloud of the organization. So I don't know. If, do you know about the foundation that we have or not so much? No, not so much. So, like, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So th this is the timeline I sort of know. So there was a Monero fork called Loki, and then Loki kind of spun up Loki Net, and then from Loki Net, Oxen kind of came out of that, and Session came out of that as well. Is that kind of correct? Oh, very interesting perspective. I would say okay. <laughs> uh, close, like super, super, super close. close. Yeah. Um, yeah, put all these things together. We have a non-profit foundation set up in Australia, uh, and that is like the parent organization of everything. And then we... Um, we, yeah, so we used to be called Loki. Uh, Loki was the crypto, Loki was the organization, and we had this you know, Loki Autonomous Government Foundation, LAG. It was a very fitting name for such an organization. <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, we've been building for about f uh, five years now. And I think it was, uh, man, COVID really messed with my brain in terms of like dates Timelines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but I think it was uh, the start of last year we changed to loki uh, so we changed from loki to oxen and yep. yes yeah, change foundation to the oxen privacy privacy technology foundation and the crypto we changed from loki to oxen and loki net we kept the same and session that actually used to be called loki messenger and we rebranded that to session messenger uh to sort of give it its own um like branding and like uh position in the space uh, you're probably aware. Yeah, you're probably aware. Whenever you have a uh, crypto, you have a product, and you attach crypto to it, everyone starts going, "Oh, scam, scam, scam!" Because you know, ninety nine point nine percent of the projects are scams. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and we were just like, "No, but we are a crypto project, and we are doing this messaging application, and we are going to like, we're going to do it. Like, we're serious about this, and we have been serious the entire time. But we sort of have to keep balancing how we look, I guess, um, because these people who, you know." They're not really doing anything. Keep trying to do stuff that we're actually trying to do. Anyway, long story short, it's been a huge adventure. We've come super far. Uh, we have hundreds of thousands of users on session at this stage. And yeah, I see those numbers just going up from here. Very cool, man. Very cool. So yeah, um, run us through like the session app, if you can, like sort of how that started, like what um, sort of protocols you're using. It's obviously end-to-end -end encrypted and like what differentiates it from say the whatsapps and the i don't know facebook messages of the world <laughs> yeah uh, what a concept um all right facebook versus session um <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Not> day. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. it's like the, it's the opposite i would say to a degree but not many people even understand how facebook messenger works or whatsapp works or any of this sort of stuff works so to even compare it to that is a confusing concept for many people 
I would just say as a user, um, all you really need to know is that we can't get access to your messages at all. We, we, we cannot. It is like functionally impossible. The network is decentralized. The, there's no metadata between you communicating with your friend, your family, or anybody. And it, whereas, you know, Facebook, you log into your Facebook account, but it's pretty much KYC view, even though you haven't given them your driver's license. Um, if you change the name, this actually happened to a friend of mine, change the name, and they actually had to prove it. They had to send Facebook their driver's license. Otherwise, they were like, no, this, you know, you're changing your name, like, it's not okay sort of thing. So they, it's it, it, like maybe like three or four years ago. So it's very strange. For us, there is no metadata, there is no phone numbers, there is no email. It is just you connecting with your friends and your family. Um, so yeah, in short, um, one of them has a million strings attached and session has no strings attached. And mm -hmm. that's sort of mm -hmm. what you really need to know um, when you want to connect with your friends and family and others. Yeah, it's so cool. It's such a cool app. So like I, I use it as a daily driver and try to onboard as many people as possible onto it sort of away from I like I like signal as well um, but like you mentioned it's got some KYC um, elements to it right so like you have to put in your phone number and there is metadata associated with it as well telegrams on the same same track where they they do store stuff and store your, your some some details about you and um, also telegrams people... sorry I keep going yeah, I yeah go, for, go for it no, well, yeah, like telegram's it. not really a private messaging application like, no you have yeah. to set up yeah. that private chat like you have to actually actively set it up and it doesn't work for desktop last time i checked so maybe it does now but previously you could only go device to device on mobile and, and it was browser very i think maybe as well oh, they did like, the browser. Think was, yeah i think so yeah. at one point i don't use it i don't use, I use any of them like WhatsApp is pretty gross as well. Like it's, I hate in WhatsApp how it says like end-to-end -end encryption, and it's like yeah, but not really because it's like <laughs> you can see all the data, right? Um, yeah. And it it sort of belongs to Facebook. But what I love about Session is I so I've got a lot of devices so across my home network, um, full nodes like um, servers like everything every device you can think of like on all the time. And I install Session with like its own name for each of the devices so I can just communicate with that box, right? So like, um, for example, my Torrent box, I can just send stuff to it. Or uh, like I've got a Plex server, I can send stuff to that as well. Um, just what, little what, things like... Could you explain yeah. that? Like, I don't want to dox you or give you any data, but it sounds like a really <laughs> interesting concept. I'm really excited. Well, okay, tell me, tell me. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's like... Um, it's, it's always been a pain point, right? So like, say you, you're like, for example, my, my Bitcoin node to send, say an address to that or, um, send, uh, what else would you send? Like a, or even just like a recovery key or something like any, any information you need to send to that box. Yeah. Historically, it's been quite difficult to do. So like what I normally do, and even in like, you know, school network, that sort of thing, like setting up, um, all sorts of different servers across the network. I just found it such a game changer because I don't have to then log into, say, an email. Like, that's how I kind of used to do things, like log in, then send something, sign sign out, and then you have that, like, password, whatever it is, you know. Yeah. Um, just trying to do it quickly. Now, a session, you can send it from, from that device across the network, like, as quickly as possible. And I use it all the time. It's, it's such a game changer. And the fact that you can do it encrypted... End to end, and if you if you want to kill that entire conversation, you can just wipe it in yeah. like you know two seconds. It's gone. Like yeah. it's it's amazing. It's really really cool. So that's what's really um, been a game changer for me. And there's no other really there's no tool out there that's that's quite like Session that allows you to do that. Everything else is like sign up to this, sign up to this. You know, give your life away <laughs> to be allowed to communicate like with your yeah. own devices. Like it's crazy. When, when, so, you do that, when you do that, do you have an ONS for like your main one, like Kieran, Mad Dog Kieran, and then you sort of communicate so, with so, so no, so I've got mine, and then yeah, I've just got like um, each of the devices like added to that one account, yeah. so I can just send stuff to it, and yeah, it's it's just such such a simple, easy thing to do. And I'm not sure there's many other people doing it, so I think it's such a good use case to communicate with yourself <laughs> yeah, without yeah. um worrying about it. a third party sort of looking at it like it's yeah it's it's a game changer um but with that like what what i really want to do and you, you can probably guide me on this so i've joined a couple of the 
communities in in session Beautiful. and one of the one of the big projects I'm, I'm working on is the school of bitcoin which we've probably touched base on before um what i'm what i'm looking at doing is uh we've actually got the curriculum from el salvador and uh, we're looking at using elements of that elements of a few different things to actually write a, an accredited bitcoin course in australia so i'm actually studying my tie at the moment to specifically learn how to how to do that and how how, how how it's been quite interesting so looking at units of competency and how they like interplay into a course so there's blockchain courses out there already so kind of the like the hard outlines being done but it's mapping that to bitcoin um specifically but with that project what i really want to do is create a a community so we've, at the moment we're using discord um, which I'm not a fan of, to be honest. Like, it's fine for gaming. Like, if I'm playing Call of Duty, great. Put on a headset and you can sort of chat to your friends while you're shooting people. But in terms of, like, building a community, I don't think it's it's the best um, piece of technology out there, specifically because of what you've sort of alluded to um, with the metadata and, and collection of data, like you, with, with Discord... There's been a number of cases, one in the UK, where this girl uh, was actually kicked out of her school for not getting vaccinated. And um, she was like, you know, 14, 15, something like that. And she actually built her own school on Discord with kids doing their own <laughs> research. And it was amazing, like such a cool thing. Um, and she had like thousands of kids getting connected, like doing their own research, saying like, oh, like the pros and cons of getting vaccinated, why she didn't, blah, blah, blah. And then branching out into all this other research that the kids were doing on their own. Anyway, the Crown came along and shut it down. The Crown? And they yeah, were like, like the, the, yep. the English government, the Queen herself? Yep. Came down and went, yep. stop it. So, oh. no. Yeah, exactly right. And, like, because, like, it's like it's basically clear text, right? They could see everything, and they said, no, nah, this is no good. These kids are learning on their own. Gone. So, I was just like, wow, that's insane. So... From reading that and hearing about that story, I was kind of like, geez, I th I'm, I'm not comfortable with having the School of Bitcoin community on Discord. I really want to migrate everybody to something like Session. Like I've been, I've been researching a few different projects, like there's Matrix, um, which is quite interesting. And yeah, all these different projects. But in my mind, I'd really love to support an Australian company for starters. So like, you know, Australian software is awesome. But yeah, like that's number one. But number two, like it's just awesome software and I use it all the time. So I'd love to onboard people into a, a community specifically. So we've got we've got a group set up. So like it's the internal sort of faculty, um, like core group of educators that sort of meet up once a week. But I want to create like an open um, community as well. So like not a group, but the like when you go into the app, there's a handful of communities that you can join. And I've kind of been asking in there, like, how do I set up my own community? But I haven't really got a proper answer yet. So I thought maybe you might be able to help me with that. Dude, this is this is exactly, um, I feel like we're connected mentally right now because this is exactly right. Oh, I'm awesome. Taking. So um, for me, community is extremely important for organic growth for the application, you know, moving forward. Uh, next year, and already now we are focused on this, but it, you, you know, you can't just snap your fingers. It takes time to actually create these features, especially in decentralized network. I'm not going to bore people, but things are hard. You know, it's just what it is, especially trying to, you know, do something new. You will make mistakes. You yep. need to learn. Yeah, all that jazz. Anyway, I'm really focused on communities. Um, you can, it, so straight up, the, there's the challenge. There's what we're doing. There's where we're going and how I see it all playing out over the next 12 months. So the challenge right now is if I, if you come to me and say, hey, Chris, I want to stick my you know, channel on that front page, um, it brings us into this world of terms and services with Apple and Google, where if you do or say anything in that channel, it comes back to us and we can be sort of deplatformed oh, for that. That's why right. those channels are highly moderated and people keep complaining about being censored and this and that. It's like, because we have oh, to, we have yeah. to, and you need to go away. <laughs> like we... Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So that's like that's that. If if you can open the application and you can find that thing straight away, um, and there's something like not positive there that breaks those terms, we are gonna have to deal with things. So, yeah, um, that's that. That's why that's very simple. Um, yeah. So what we're doing right now, closed groups specifically. Um, let's be very frank with you. 
I love them. I think it is one of the most critical things we need working perfectly to um, really have good organic growth. But unfortunately, uh, the last implementation that we did, you know, six, seven months ago um, in the wild, it just, it ran into some issues. It ran into some issues with encryption, encryption key transfers. So you have this channel with up to 99 people or 100 people. And every time you join the channel, you exchange encryption keys. And if you have multi-device, it does it again. If one person's offline, they don't get new keys. They sort of come out of sync and it's all these issues. We've been working on this. We had like re-architected it. Uh, we've been like designing, building for um, a few months now. Uh, it is a bit of a challenge to do perfectly. And we think that the goal was to get this out in January, but we've had a few hurdles. Um, we've jumped over them. And I think that I would expect by March, this closed groups to be um, fantastic. And there's also some moderation features that are gonna be added to that as well. So that whole experience of those closed groups, um, those groups up to hundred people is gonna be lovely. It's gonna be lovely. I, to be honest, I haven't had any issues with the, the groups. How many people? Um, like, is it... How many people you have in those groups? Uh, maybe three to five or six. Yeah, put, six put in 30 there. in there. Put 30 in there and okay. get back to me. Right, um, right, right. And we're aware okay. of this and okay. we're like, we've been working on this to fix it. We will. So I'm, I'm so keen on that. I look forward to that coming out. Um, so there's that. And then, so with, as I said before, we've got an issue with closed groups. We, you know, we're thinking about what, what does the future of this look like? How do you, Okay, so if our goal is one, so we have you know three, four hundred thousand users at this time. If our goal is one million by mid next year, what do we need to do to get there? Communities are definitely at the forefront of that, and then making it easy, you know, deep links as well. So you have this community. You don't even have session installed. I can give you this link. You'll install session and join the channel like directly. Ah, oh, that was my other question. Yeah. Awesome. Deep links, oh, deep links. Wow. So awesome. like I'm on the same page. I completely agree with you. Hell yeah. And what you're saying is what we want to deliver to people. And we think that delivering on these um, challenges were straight up organic growth. Literally, you want to get 50 people on the channel. You want to create this channel that's, you know, private and you can all sort of, you know, come together uh, and, you know, you, and you can't get this anywhere else. Great. That's what we want to deliver. Perfect. Uh, and then from there, um, yeah, I don't want to reveal too much, you know, like I've been thinking a lot about the future recently and like exactly how we want to achieve these goals. And I haven't told the whole team everything yet, so I don't want to tell you before the whole team. I, I would feel a bit <laughs> bad about that. So, yeah. Do you have any questions on those points? Does that make sense? Any sort of great? That makes a lot of sense. Well, that, that was my other big question. So I was like, all right, for the closed groups, if we want to do that sort of before. Well, actually, so so when you go into the app, there's a, there's a, when you have all those like links down the bottom that you can join like that are public at the top it says like enter community id so does that mean i can still create a community that's not like public on the app and that's not moderated is that correct let me uh i got, I got, I got it in front of me now so you hit the plus oh, yeah let's have a look plus. <laughs> um i don't know i can't do a screen share with you it's just too much there's too much uh doxable data here i'm sorry yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Um, you get a plus <laughs> then we'll say new group create group or join community so create group is your you know one to 99 people uh join community is yep. joining those multi-thousand uh, person communities and then new message is just you chatting to a friend or or family so yeah, that's kind of where you can see right now in the future as well. So yeah. so it's got so it's got enter community URL at the top there. So it's got like these are the public ones, yep. and then there's a URL yep. option. Yep. Is that is that something that I could make now? Like I can make a URL and put it in there, and it would be private to a certain degree. Absolutely, anyone who has that URL will be able to find it. Um, yep. There's a guide online if you type in you know, session, create open group or community, session, create community, uh, you should be able to find a link. I can probably send you something after this as well. Okay, cool, cool, yeah, cool. You can do it right, right now. Right, so it's possible yeah, now. Yeah, right now. Awesome. Moderation tools are fantastic. That's, that's totally possible. So we could do that now. And then later on, there'll be more tools and moderation to sort of, uh, to, to, to build on that, I suppose. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's really, really cool. That's awesome. All right, so I think... Yeah, that's that's a lot of the the sort of technical questions that I had, like specific to that. I was looking at and and I know like you're you're sort of focused on growth at the moment, and I don't know how much you've looked at the the Lightning community and all the stuff that's being built built on that specifically. There was, if I think it was about a year ago, um, Signal actually launched 
like a wallet like integration into signal app i was like super excited i'm like oh awesome like what are they doing and they like spun up their own token mobile coin and yeah. i was just like yeah like why would they do that i was just like that's such a like waste of time like who who's gonna go out of their way to go and buy that new token to put it onto the thing to send to somebody it's like there's one there's a million tokens already so integrate one of them um but two, like all the dev work that's been happening with Lightning integration specifically and the massive community there, I thought, well, that would be a no-brainer. Integrate that, and I'm sure you could get devs helping with that sort of for free for the most part. Um, and then you'd, you'd sort of build that user base, but they didn't do that. Is that something that you guys have thought about um, with Session and sort of maybe mimicking what they did or doing something better than that specifically with lightning <laughs> i really like signal um but i feel like what they do with mobile coin was probably one of the weirdest things i've ever seen signal do um yeah. it was a bit strange because their ceo was sort of stepping back maybe or uh, i don't know the whole story i feel like there was funny there was like internal things going on with their company and people changing it i i, I don't want to fud them i, I like look I, I like signal we're not gonna do it like that what we would do uh, in the future um I don't know. So, so obviously we have our own cryptocurrency, Oxen, uh, privacy uh, currency with instant transactions, uh, I would say. Um, we are, I don't know if we'd add Bitcoin straight away. Like maybe, like, I can't, you know, I can't like, um, can't really reveal this sort of stuff. It is of interest. I would <laughs> yeah, say it is enough. of interest. I like, I love crypto. Yep. I love crypto, been a crypto G for many years. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always get what, what 2022 now. I think it's like 10 years. I've been in the, I mean, I've been a crypto um, fanatic for like 10 years, um, and I, I like, I like all crypto that actually brings something to the world. And I think that's sort of like one of the major things that brought me into the space. Did you, when you met me, was I working on a? I was working on something like Coin Gecko. No, actually, sorry, bring us all back. I can't remember. When you met me, <laughs> I was trying to convince simon uh now that he was co-founder of oxen and and uh yeah. um, chain flip and all sort of stuff uh, i was trying to convince him to build a website with me that was like pulling gecko but it really broke down crypto and it really uh cut through all the noise and it was just like this project is doing this for this reason and it's probably going to have like this is probably going to happen for whatever so it was really like analytical website kind of like coin gecko but a lot more depth it's kind of where coin gecko is today to be very frank with you um but that's what i want to yeah, achieve yeah. And that's kind of what brought me back into the space. That's what made me go all in in the space. So yes, so bring it all back there. For session, if we're going to bring in currencies, obviously we bring in Oxen. It's the, you know, it's pretty good crypto, my man. It's pretty good crypto. And the whole network really relies on Oxen as well. It's like the base incentive layer. So it's really important to us. Yep. Uh, on top of that, um, yeah, maybe Bitcoin. You know? I'll, I'll, keep you, I'll let you know ahead of time. <laughs> I'll give you the, the download. Well, well well, I think like the, the, the big thing, it kind of blows my mind that there's not more people integrating Lightning um, into into apps because like it's, it's kind of, the hard work's kind of been done and like e even just for tipping and stuff, like you can like you can integrate code pretty quickly from what I've been told um, into websites, into platforms and it's all, it's all kind of there. But so where's the incentive? It's, I'd, 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 I'd even separate like Bitcoin from Lightning a little bit because it, even though it is like instant, Bitcoin, there's like, it's essentially pretty much free transactions. And like the name would suggest, like super, super quick, right? So you can like send to the other side of the world, like instantaneously. And then like with places like El Salvador and Argentina now and um, Central Africa, like they're, they're all, uh, even the Philippines now looking at um, having like the, the, national currencies as as btc like built on on strike for remittance and all that sort of thing um so it kind of makes sense like for open source development to be moving in that direction to to facilitate these these countries and like this cool sort of movement that's happening so yeah that's just a question so it might be on your roadmap <laughs> is that the answer <laughs> yeah i think you really have to think about incentives um not just with this but with all things crypto like obviously signal probably did mobile coin because they had no incentive to add bitcoin 
that mm. incentive to create yeah. know, like to make a buck off some random mobile coins you know uh and, and yeah, from yeah. our perspective what's our incentive to add lightning network um, yes there's all these countries around the world our current focus right now is um bringing on particular um privacy and security conscious individuals to uh who would then later be willing to be monetized for the application on our journey to sort of mass adoption so right now well, that's so sorry, cut you off, but that that was kind of my point. So, like the analogy or the the juxtaposition, I suppose, for uh, Signal bringing in their own coin, and um, like like the opportunity there for Session specifically to grow, so like to become like to sort of take over that, right? So, like there is like millions of people using the Lightning Network BTC specifically. Like you can look you can look at the charts and just see it's like like just exponentially going up all those people could potentially be communicating like with session and, and utilizing lightning. So like growth would be the incentive, right? Yeah. Um, and I don't disagree with you, but I would say not all growth is the same growth. Uh, if you have growth from people who are okay. not really familiar with a platform, not really familiar with certain things and they come in with demands from a different perspective and it doesn't like bring value to the project. It's sort of a growth that you have to, pivot towards and focus on and you sort of have to put aside your values and what you're trying to do as a project to facilitate this other community. So, you know, we're, we're trying to bring in a particular type of, of person and community at this stage because we have like different phases of um, like growth and different phases of who we want to bring to the project. So the answer is... So, so geeks, geeks at the moment. Geeks, pretty funny. geeks <laughs> please come at us. We love you. Yeah. Um, privacy geeks. Oh. So, yeah, 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 so hitting up, um, really targeting, you know, like some, I'm not saying that I deserve um, the assistance or, and, and the communications networks tailored for them, but you only have so much time, you only have so much money, you only have so much um, energy, and you really need a focus that we think that you'll get a multiplying outcome first, at least, or like for the first period. Uh, so once we sort of hit our target goals, um, the infrastructure will be built for these countries anyway. Like we. We, we put in sort of like automated translation services. And once you do it for like one country, then anyone can come in and like do the rest. So it's all about focus. Yeah. And then it actually streamlines everything else, all other onboarding. And that's sort of what we're trying to do. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm keen to hear uh, yeah, what, what you guys are sort of working on and having, having the pipe. But I think it could be something cool to do down the track for sure. Now, I wanted to switch gears and talk about you specifically, if, if we can, and your, your learning journey, because uh, Get Off Zero is about learning journeys, and I think yours will be quite quite interesting. So um, before we get into Bitcoin or crypto or anything, um, the, the first time that you questioned money and what money is and where it comes from, was that pre-BTC? Um, or sort of post learning about BTC and, and cryptocurrencies. Uh, <laughs> it's something that I think about every day. So I'm trying to think about the first time I thought about that. It's like, uh, uh, can yeah, we start yeah, with yeah. yours? Because uh, my my brain's gonna have to like really dig deep on this one. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So uh, forgive um, forgive me. The audience has probably heard this oh, before, I, but. Um, <laughs> um, Go back to 2007, so there's a film called Zeke Geist that came out and it was like huge on the internet and everyone was sort of watching it. It was like the first big release, like um, torrent sort of movie that just went crazy. I think it was Google Video at the time. And um, there's a segment in there talking about the monetary system, specifically not being backed by gold. And it, like they go sort of in depth into it. And I was just like, oh my God, this is crazy. And then sort of the following year was the GFC and then um, so I was like looking looking for solutions the whole time thinking well this is crazy like surely we can fix this and then um, 2012 with the whole Occupy movement I was um, ironically researching universal basic income as a solution uh, to, to that sort of problem right and then came across BTC and the white paper and I was like in my mind naively i was like oh well the government can just give everyone a, a minor right and that's your ubi sorted <laughs> not thinking that's like the flies in the face of everything that the government's sort of uh trying to achieve i suppose and and money printing and all the rest of it um 
but yeah, so like around 2007 was uh, like the time I first started questioning what money is and where it comes mm. from. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I do appreciate it. Sorry for everyone else who's already heard it before, but I loved it. Yeah, I also. <laughs> um, so I remember in 2008, this is when I sort of like started to grasp the concept of money a bit better. Um, so I was like 18 at that stage. And I just remember the price of things going up. And this is like a recession, but it was weird because fuel was going up. Like in Australia, we didn't really get hit with a recession, but there's just weird things happening. Like if now I would say it felt like inflation, but at the time I didn't really know what it was because fuel was going up, everything went up like some portion. And it was really strange how it all went up at the same time. And it made you question like, wait, why is this happening? Who's controlling? Is someone controlling this? Like what's going on here? Um, and I was always disillusioned by large amounts of money because it's like, what is... Like, how do you even get that much money? Like, like how, if you have like $50 million, how do you get $50 million? Like, if you're one person, there's no way you can bring $50 million of value to the world. Like, how, how is it even possible? Um, so it, 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 when you start, because I grew up um, not well off, yeah? So I grew up not well off, and the concept of money, I'm a frugal, I'm a frugal individual. I don't, I don't spend a lot. Um, I'm happy to wear the same T-shirt every day. That's who I am. Like, I just don't care about spending money on these things. and not a not a man of possessions. So um for me no big deal a minimalist yeah, I, borderline minimalist <laughs> because i also get really excited about technology and it's hard to be a minimalist who loves technology it's like uh, one in one out one in one out yeah, yeah i'm i'm actually i think I've, I've discovered it i'm a hoarder but a digital hoarder so i can see i can see the background <laughs> it's like well not so much this like this this stuff's like whatever but i'm i'm along the same lines as you like try to be as minimal as possible but when it comes to like my my digital footprint i just keep absolutely everything like going back for years and maybe that's not a healthy thing maybe you should be like culling that stuff as well but uh, 2011 2012 i was at school like uh like later studies and i got into bitcoin my cousins are like hey my, i see my cousin today i haven't seen him in years he's coming it's coming by today and they, they were telling me about bitcoin and uh, I was like, this, this is ridiculous. I was very negative about Bitcoin. I'm, I'm very like pessimistic. I'm like, oh, it's probably, it's probably crap. It's probably a scam, you know. Uh, and then I read the white paper. I'm like, oh my god, this is incredible. I must, I must. Uh, and then when I hit around 100 bucks, I was like, this is, you know, w w like as if it's going to go any further, you know. But yeah, bringing back to this concept of money, I feel like I think about it so much. Like I think about like how eh, we're, we're living this like trust game every day and the whole economy is based off this concept that you trust that tomorrow is going to be more fruitful than today and we're having this moment where in the news every day they're saying that oh we're gonna have a bad economy next year so not only is it like it's probably we're, we're gonna have a bad economy next year like around the world but they keep saying it every day which kind of makes it true which is a really annoying catch-22 of a concept if they just said like oh, don't worry about it we're gonna be fine maybe things would be fine who knows um so Manifest yeah. being yeah. I don't know if this is the same all around the world, but you have this concept of, I, I watched how the 2008 housing market collapsed in America. And it was crazy how you had these houses because I had friends who were there and they, you know, they had a house one day, then they didn't have a house. And it's like, how do you, how do people lose houses on mass? And you sort of like understand these concepts. Like, mm. you know, there's something, there's something in this, there's something wrong here. Um, and you understand like the, like when you dig into 2008 financial crisis, it is crazy it's crazy that people didn't go to jail for this it's crazy that like people just paid money to get out of money problems to solve more money problems to print more money to and it's like that doesn't add up and in life if something doesn't add up it has to sort itself out or you have to you know swallow your pride and you have to fix it yourself and we're not swallowing pride we are we are ignoring problems we are printing money to solve money problems and um every year it just like I don't want to be this negative person. Uh, I never want to be this negative person. But it's just so clear that things don't add up, and, and people are just really happy to just like oh, you know forget about the numbers. Leave it to the leave it to the calculators, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it's an everyday it's an everyday thought for me, and it's something that I just try and tuck in because I until I want to talk about. So I apologize for not giving you like an exact date when I kicked this off when I. No, no, that, that was that was a great answer. Yeah, jeez, uh, yeah. fantastic. So, so like that. So that being said, so that was your that was my next question. So your cousin came, told you about BTC around 2012, and you were like, "Nah, this is." Oh, that, I got I got into it. I got into it like maybe a week later. I do this thing where I go I, I go on hardcore oh, okay. rabbit holes. You tell me something, 
Uh, I, didn't, I didn't believe you, sir. I didn't believe you. I go away. I spend the whole weekend. I remember spending three days just like researching everything I could on Bitcoin. I was like, I need to know everything. Um, and then I, I sort of got that under my belt. And I was like, just like so many years ago, I was just like Bitcoin maxi. And it was just so demotivating because um, nobody understands money. Nobody understands the economy. And you chat to someone who's like study economics no. and they'll tell you that you're a fool because you didn't study economics. And then you ask them questions and they're like, oh, that's... You know, who knows? Who knows? It's like, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. they've they got, got no they've answers. got no answers. Like the the Keynesians, yeah. just no. Nah, it's it's, it really it's amazing, and because they've got a, a degree in economics, they think that this is like the be all and end all. And it's like, it's it's actually harder to explain money to someone with a degree in economics than it is to anybody else. Which is like the irony is out of control with that. Yeah, it's it's yeah. wild. Um, so. Yes, switching from that, I suppose, it's like you're, well, on, on that path. So then you sort of joined the, the Bitcoin Center at some stage. What, what year was that? It was like 20... I think it was like 2015. 15? My, my beautiful, beautiful, yeah. fantastic wife, you know, um, she was like, do, do, chase your dream, chase your dream. Like learn software development, build like this website you want to build, go hardcore into crypto. She's like, go to this blockchain center. She found the meetup. She's like, go to this thing, do this thing. Was it was a blockchain center or a Bitcoin center when you joined? I, I also remember. can't remember. Uh, I think it maybe just changed in that yeah, period. Really well. <laughs> uh, I went there, right, met right. the most incredible people. The the best and the worst of crypto were all there. The best and the worst, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which was such a good lesson. It was an incredible lesson. I had it. I like, instantly walked in the room like I, I don't know about this person. This person, I don't know what's going on here. Like these people are weird. They're, they're talking like they know stuff. And they're making themselves look really good. Anyway, yeah, a lot of people, good and bad. And I learned so much in that space. And I'm so glad to meet you. So glad to meet Simon, Key. I met Josh there. I met like the, the biggest scammers in crypto at that time. And I met the most legit people in crypto at that time. And oh my God. Did you, did you meet a lot of people there? Did you did you get that energy? Yeah, heaps. Yeah, it was it was amazing, actually. It was like so interesting to see. So you obviously know the story with... Uh, Andrew Kwan coming to my school from the Bitcoin Center and donating the 21 Bitcoin and stuff. So it's like, yeah, real legit people who are really mm. like focused on the, like the, my passion yep. is education, obviously. So like, um, focused on that. And like we had the, um, the EDU program that we set up together, like a foundation, um, which ended up being like the mechanism we use for the kids to vote and allocate like all the funds for the learning space. Spend it on candy. So cool. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, no, no, it was it was nuts, man. Like they they had so many like wacky ideas, but like good wacky ideas. So it was all like um, tech based. So like the the four shipping containers we had. I don't know if you've seen the videos or anything, but um, basically there was four dedicated to so one one dedicated to like a VR space, a virtual reality. Um, one dedicated to which we called a, a telenaut space. So instead of like an astronaut, you're a telenaut mm -hmm. teleporting somewhere. One dedicated to three D printing. One and like makerspace, one dedicated to engineering and game making, and then one de dedicated to podcasting and like a news studio sort of thing. And the kids like allocated like all the funds for that, so yeah, it was re really fun. So yeah, it was like yeah, people like that in that space were like really like forward thinking and and um, really progressive, I would say. And then yeah, people who kind of wanted to hijack that to make money. Off yeah, of I remember. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> the two complete different yeah. groups here. Uh, yeah, it was it was crazy. And like to learn, not because I, I, you know, the people doing the dodgy stuff offered me a job a few times and I was like, something inside of me is telling me I need to leave the room right now. And they offered me a job multiple times. I'm like, I have to, I, I got to think about this. And um, I just kept leaving. I was like, oh, <laughs> not, not for me, not for me. I'm so happy I did because I don't want to get, I don't want to, there was a project. Uh, we both know the project because I know they also got involved with your school thing. And I saw them, uh, yeah. I saw this video of them at the school uh, doing like when Lambo, teaching the kids about Lambos. That was like, that was your knowledge. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, man. Dude, you, you have no yeah. idea what you're talking about. You're like getting, you're teaching kids get yes. rich quick schemes when you have this incredible. That was super cringe. Yeah. Super cringe. I was like, oh, man. Yeah, this, yeah. Yeah, we both know the name. We won't. Don't give them a. Don't give them air space. <laughs> but I remember they showed me the white paper of that project yeah. before it launched. They're like, "Oh, Chris, what do you think about this white paper?" I'm like, "This is the biggest scam I've ever seen." And I was saying that to the CEO of that project, yeah. and he was just like, 
interesting nice. and i didn't know he was running it i didn't know he was running yeah. it and um i was like this is really bad man like a child has written this and he was like oh interesting interesting <laughs> oh man what a killer um yeah so all right so so on that note so you, you you sort of came into the bitcoin space you had um btc at what stage did you sort of diversifying into um other sort of crypto projects and um altcoins good question so i remember um so my cousins who told me about bitcoin i told them about ethereum and, I, and maybe like a year before ethereum kicked off i was like guys ethereum it's coming out next year we have to put all our money to it. it's going to be freaking huge and i just forgot about it <laughs> i just forgot about it and and then it came out yeah, and yeah, then yeah. i was like oh damn i missed it i missed it um i was really kicking myself so like oh ethereum's like the future of yeah so i got really excited about ethereum beforehand and then it came off, and I, I didn't I didn't get on early, yeah. which really sucks because it's like I was too early. Oh, so you, you weren't involved. Nah, with the, I was the too Dow early. It was like my life problem. No. I'm just too early. Yeah. Um, I get like really excited, and then no one's there with me, so I'm just like, oh, nobody likes this, and then I kind of leave it. Yeah, forgot which is about really it. Unfortunate, yeah. but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. that's life. Such is life. So yeah, I really liked I liked Ethereum beforehand. I liked Ethereum. I like Ethereum today. I still love Ethereum. I think Ethereum brings a lot to the community, and it's. Yeah, you know, like this whole concept of like what lightning, excuse my foolishness, I apologize if I don't get this right, but my understanding of lightning is like it's a layer two on Bitcoin, yeah? So it's like, they're not even node operators. You have to hold, yeah. you have to hold a certain amount of Bitcoin because you're sort of like the, um, yeah, the channels. In the channels, yeah. yeah so you, you can, you have like yeah. X amount in the channel and which at first I thought, well, doesn't that yeah. centralize the project a bit? But it's the opposite. It actually makes it more decentralized and, and next to near anonymous. Like once it gets past the yeah, more for people, it, more for it. It's great. Um, like yeah, utilizing it. Yeah, it's 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 quite um it's quite elegant. Like the the solution for it, and it works. It works really mm. really well. Like I was skeptical at first because as as I suppose most people in the um yeah. in the ecosystem were because it's like well. Um, on chain works and you know the fees were high and stuff and all right well lightning fine and reading through it you're kind of like oh okay is this like another scam like is, is someone trying to like build out a scam like on top of it once andreas antonopoulos came on board like he's written a book on it i was just like oh yeah this this is like legit like they've they're really building out something special here and yeah i think it's it's fixed or it's fixed the scaling issue because it's just fast as hell and it just has more and more users every day. So, yeah, lightning all the way, in my opinion. And I think, like, uh, like I, I know you're you're an Ethereum fan. I was, like, back in the day. And, I, you know, Andreas has written a book about um, Ethereum as well. Um, I don't know about proof of stake. So, like, the, the from from what I've seen, there's been a lot of issues with it. And, like, the, what are the issues? Um, I, I don't know about yeah, any whole, issues. Tell well, me. Okay. Yeah, sure. All right. Well, from what I've seen, there has been so like people trying to stake, and it keeps getting pushed back. Oh, and yeah, I've yeah. kind of like disconnected. I don't a, know if it's a that, proof of stake but, specific problem, um, more a like huge, okay. huge network yeah, like trying to change it all. Like even with Bitcoin, you see this—they want to add something, and it just like try and change the wheels on a bus going 500 kilometers an hour with 50, like like with a million people on it. It's like you're not going to be able to do that quickly. No, 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 definitely not. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see. See how proof of stake goes. In my mind, that centralizes the project, though. Like, so you're actually running, um, like, or to 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 run a full node now. You can't, right? So, in terms of being able to actually download the whole blockchain and run it on a on a node yourself, that that's not possible. For what? At this For point. Ethereum, Is that correct. For uh... Ethereum, yeah. So they call yeah. them they call them validator nodes and some other type of node, but it's like you can't rip down the whole blockchain and verify it, as far I, as I'm I aware, think... anyway. Because um, we did that back in the day, and I, like when I looked into it again, I'm like, oh, okay, so they call it something else, or I don't know. I yeah, I, <laughs> look, I, I don't run a, I don't personally run a validator for Ethereum, so I'm not like up with the lingo. I get bored with things. That's who I am. That's what I've got wrong. That's what I stuffed up here all yeah. the time. I, bought, I got excited about Bitcoin. I got bored with Bitcoin. I got excited about Ethereum. I got bored with Ethereum. I got like, um, yeah, I love these technologies. 
Well, don't don't get ex- don't get bored with well, session if you can help that's it. That's kind of like the concept here. Yeah, no, no, but like <laughs> that's like a difference here is that it's something that you can just use every day. You don't have to be entertained by it. It is like what connects you to the world. Yeah. So and the same with staking. And don't hear me out. Hear me out. This is why I'm actually for Ethereum staking and for like Oxen staking. Is say you have Bitcoin, say you have Ethereum. It's like sitting there in your wallet, and you're like, oof, I really wish I could get like gains on that, or I wish I could like do something productive with it. So imagine you could stake your Bitcoin. Say you had one Bitcoin, you could stake that to a full node and you're running a valid, like you're running a, just a full mode, like so making sure that people were uh, like the whole blockchain could be like working in like a remote way or you could like be, you know, running. Imagine you as an individual could be part of the Lightning Network um, by staking your Bitcoin. And you probably can, I don't know. And I've probably said something foolish here, but like you want it, you want, you have your Bitcoin, you want to do as much as you can for that network but a lot of the time you can't do anything with your Bitcoin. So I'm really for proof of stake because it's like, not only do I not want to spend this at all, I want it to be working for me. I want to be doing as much as I can for the network and like, like let's do it. And I think that with um, Ethereum and with Oxen and a few other cryptos out there, like you can stake your Oxen and you run your node and that node is communicating all those SMS messages. So not only like are you making a profit, like you get Oxen returns, you have this like, me personally, I guess, I have this pride in the project where, you know, you, you, you're this trustless, like, I don't know, not ant, but, you know, node in this whole system of, you know, hundreds of thousands of people communicating with each other. Uh, I just think it's really cool. And that, um, when that excitement dies down, because like, you know, we're doing it for a long time, that's okay. It hasn't died down yet. But you're, because you're staking these nodes, it's like you get like a little reward every day. You know, it's like you, you win like a little bit every day because we like put it into like micro um, batching transactions. So, yeah, I just think it's like being gamified in a fun way. And like it is something that you can do to help the network. And it sort of all comes together in this way, I think, that sort of keeps your attention and, and entertained and also helps the network. And I think that's important. So, so to, to push back a bit, so like what, like why, um, stake versus mine? So like the, the, so I'm mining here, so I mine BTC and that goes, yeah, it's awesome. And like doing that, you're uh, only, I've got like home miners, right? So it's like, you know, 14 tera hash or something. It's not, it's not, um, the, 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 the most hash power in the world, but at least I'm contributing to the network and it's like the same philosophy, right? So it's like, all right, I've got, uh, BTC, I'm doing all these things, like, cool, I'm going to contribute to the network by, you know, contributing power to that. Does proof of stake do that? Because in my mind, like, you're not, there's no proof of work, right? So there's no, there's no power, there's no energy going into proof of stake from what, from what I understand anyway. So is it like, what you're, what you're saying is like the, so say the, the Oxen network, you're contributing through validating transactions is that is that the idea um you are validating transactions you are like uh okay let's just compare the two oxen btc um when you mine bitcoin you have to put out capital to you know buy the equipment to get the machine yep. so say you spend fifty thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars whatever it is um, you have skin in the game to a degree and you're mining this stuff. Uh, it's great. Bitcoin. You're doing your thing, part of the network. Beautiful. Now, Oxen, you have to get Oxen and then you have to run a server and that server will store messages and like transfer messages and run with Loki Note and does a whole bunch of really awesome stuff. And you have to have that capital locked to that server. So either way, you need capital and you need to lock it into the network in some way. With Oxen, you buy, you're getting Oxen and you're using that. With Bitcoin though, you actually have to buy, you have to use your money, be it Bitcoin, be it USD, AUD, whatever, buy that hardware. And that hardware is not Bitcoin though. And if someone releases something better or something happens where like electricity goes up a lot, you've got all this invested capital in hardware, but you don't have the Bitcoin. So it's like, like, why do you have to buy this hardware from someone from like um, Bitmain or whatever it is, who they're holding out on you guys. Like they've got the best hardware and they're selling you the second best hardware. So yeah, and I'm not trying to have a dig at mining operations and stuff like that, but it's like, if you want to invest in Bitcoin and you want to help the Bitcoin network, why do you have to give someone, some manufacturer in China, like all your money 
um, for the chance to get Bitcoin. You know, it just that frustrates me a little bit, and I wish you didn't have to do that. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. I think there's like there's I know there's development happening. I know Intel's working on something. I wish it was more. I wish like the mining hardware wasn't centralized to China so much. Like no. <laughs> that's that. Otherwise, you're gonna... that does irk yeah. me for sure. For sure. Um, now I know you haven't got much time left, so I've got more questions about your learning journey. If that's all right, because you got you got to go on the dive, don't you? Um, okay, so um, DCAing, so dollar cost averaging. Um, have you done that in the past with BTC? Because this is a, a Bitcoin podcast, or have you thought about doing that? Uh, yeah, what's what's your philosophy around investment and dollar cost averaging? Uh... Oh, I try not to give investment advice. Um, that's my that's my golden rule. Yeah. Um, but this is what I do, I guess. I, I guess in the last bull market, I dollar costed in. You know, I just whatever money I had, just kept chucking into. Um, I was buying I was buying Bitcoin um, into the last cycle. Uh, a little bit sad now because I started like this is the time to dollar cost average in from my perspective. Like this is when I would start to doing it again. Yep. Um, but FTX, FTX, you dirty dog. It bit me. It bit me a little bit. It bit me a little oh, bit. No, that... no, you didn't have money on FTX, did you? Well, I would say I had a little bit of money on FTX, but I. But it's completely my fault because the day before I was like, "Is FTX going to go down today?" I'm like, I think it's. I think it might go down. So I took off all the money that I didn't want to lose. I was like, I can't lose this money because my wife will kill me. I'll, I'll wake up. I won't even wake up. Uh, and like I took off all all the company money, company every dollar, every cent off that I like a day before, twenty forty eight hours before, all good, all good, all off, all off. But um, yeah, I was trying to accrue, so just the all my all my um, my buy orders that that got that got taken. So oh, man, which is unfortunate. I'm sorry to hear that. That sucks. And I was staking Bitcoin. I was staking some Bitcoin. Oh, so that was it. Because no. I was like, I want to make profit off my Bitcoin. You know, yeah. like how can I use this in some way? And I have this mentality of like, you know, like you know, if you can make, if you can, like it bit me on the ass. And I know this, this is not my first radio, um, Mount Gox. I, I, I saw the Mount Gox uh, in FTX when this was happening. And they said, oh, everything's, when they said everything is fine, I was like, it is time to take my money off. Mm-hmm. Um, but it really, it's a small amount. It was like, it was what I could afford to lose. Um, so I smart enough to know that. Man. But not smart enough to just not trust anybody in crypto. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? So it's like them, Celsius, uh, BlockFi. Like it's kind of one by one. Like they're just going by the wayside. Like the that model of yeah, like staking your BTC and getting returns from a centralized service. Like it's they're all just gonna run away with your Bitcoin. And that's yeah. Here's an and that's, IOU. It's like oh man. That's yeah, great. I met the guy from Celsius in Hong Kong in twenty. 20- 20 or 2019 just before everything started kicking off in Hong Kong and I was like how how do you guys make money off this like if I if I give Celsius money like what what do you guys do with it yeah. like, what happens he's like oh it's like a bank it's just like a bank yeah I was like yeah but like I know how banks work yeah, but not like, really and, 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 then, <laughs> yeah. and then you know it's a bit funny I'm like but how what exactly like what is like the major things you guys do with the money like, oh it's just 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 like a bank it's all you would tell me I was like oh okay cool yeah, man. All right, that's interesting. Well, well, well with, with that, so there is exchanges that I uh, trust. I suppose you shouldn't use that term trust, but... Oh, um, dirty word, my friend. That Very I, dirty that I word. prefer, um, one being Amber, obviously. So the Amber team's awesome. Um, and basically their philosophy is <laughs> we don't want <laughs> your PTC. Set it yep. up, DCA, and set up your own hardware wallet. Like They've got learning materials and stuff as well. So you can go through that, and I like that. I think every exchange should be doing that. Like, we don't want you as a as a customer, like to. We don't want to be your bank, right? That's the it's the opposite of what we should be doing. Um, yeah. So they they they're the best DCA tool. So if you if you haven't checked out Amber, um, yeah, jump jump on the the Amber website. Actually, if you, if you go on getoffzeropod.com, I've got a um, promo code hashtag getoffzero, and um, yeah, you get like. 20 bucks or 10 bucks i think it is uh btc for free when you sign up and you can do as little as like 20 bucks a month and just set and forget it and it just goes straight into your hardware wallet or whatever wallet you sort of prefer to use um I just super clicked, cool i just clicked for your uh you know that um uh what did you say before like uh, coming in uh something in you were saying before like when you're buying in you're buying like a little bit at a time yeah with yeah what, what's it called again i just like had a mental blank 
What when you you're buying puts so yeah, dollar, the, dollar cost averaging? Yeah, dollar cost average. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Highly so recommended. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's that's, definitely it's the it. best. It's the best, yeah. and it's like you you're not freaking out at the price. Like you set, forget it. Like I, I even tell people like just do do that. Like if you, it's a coffee, right? It's a coffee a week. Do that and just yeah. forget about it. For, pretend like it doesn't exist. Check back in five years. <laughs> Hello. Think... Do, do, do you dollar cost average out though as well? That's the other question. No. No, so yeah, just in. <laughs> I, I, I do it both ways, you know. Like you have a, oh, you have like a target. You have a target, and you go like, all right. So my my so my target in the last bull market was like, all right, eighty k US. That's my that's my sell price. Yep. Um, leading up to that though, it's like, all right. Obviously, it might not happen. So if I want to go eighty k US, just do your own research, everybody as well. Don't just do what I say. Um, <laughs> but say say your sell price is like eighty k US. Um, sell like forty percent at like. Um, 60 or 55 or something like that and then like another like 30 percent at like 70 and then you try and just get like the last 20 or 30 percent of that price because you'll never get like that price and then and then if it goes over 80 say it hits 100 then you should sell like the, whatever the rest that, that's kind of what i did in this last one it was my successful um my successful like engagement with crypto um in a bull cycle because i was yeah. like oh the bull cycle starting i started all my money i'm like ariana uh, I was like we're selling a house, we're selling everything, like, everything on Bitcoin, everything on Bitcoin. She's like, "That's crazy." I'm like, "This is this is the start of the bull run. Everything in, everything in." <laughs> we still had negotiated a price, got that in there. Like, I just went all in hard. Um, I think when Bitcoin was at like three k, that's when I was like, "This is it. Everything nice. all in, all in." Nice. Um, I didn't get in at three k because that KYC took three weeks. But I got, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, go hard. But anyway, I think Amber's pretty cool. Like, take the um, set and forget. Like, uh, it's stressful. It's stressful trying to pick the top and the bottom. You're never going to do it. You're just going to hurt yourself. And then when it happens, you, you'll still kick yourself. you kick yourself. Even if you did the best thing ever, you'd be like, I could have made another $5,000 or whatever. Um, you'll never get it right. Absolutely. Well, unless you do. Unless you're a pro. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Um, and to bring it full circle, like the, the KYC for a week, that's something that Session doesn't have, right? <laughs> Zero KYC. That oh. should be the standard for everything. It really should be. Um, now I know I know you got to go, and I've had a bunch of other questions, but maybe we can do a follow up at some time. Um, what is thanks heaps for doing this, Chris? This has been really really fun. Um, always enjoy chatting with you. What's the best place for people to go and find you? Find out about projects you're working on, and yeah, like um, oh, and and with that, the best place um, that you go to learn about new stuff. So getting off zero education. Um, yeah, where do you learn? Um, it depends on what I'm trying to learn. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, audiobooks. Uh, I just love audiobooks. So, uh, when it comes to online crypto stuff, I use Code Gecko as my base layer for everything. You know, hear about a project, chuck it in Code Gecko, get a basic understanding, get the data, um, and then try and compare it to other things. You know, yeah, Code Gecko in comparisons, are fantastic. It's too hard to learn about crypto right now. It's too hard, and it's been too hard for too long. For maybe five years, it's just too hard. There's too much misinformation. There's too many scams. It is so hard. I don't know. I don't know anyone who's entered crypto in the last three to four years, and they've gone like, "Oh yeah, I get this." They're just pretending. And mm -hmm. even before this last bull, uh, in the middle of this last bull market, I met some of the smartest people, and they were like running this like VC firm, all this sort of stuff. I'm like, "You guys." So in my head, I didn't want to tell them this. I'm like, "You guys are so smart, but you are not wise at all, and you are going to lose all." <laughs> All your money, like all of it. Not, not even like you're going to collapse. You're going to be, you're going to be, you're going to be absolute wrecked. Um, but I, I don't have. It's not fair for me to tell people that. Um, and I haven't asked any questions since. But it's that, uh, you know, just, just sit back, just, just learn, just, just listen. And if something's not quite right, it will probably fall apart sooner or later anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, so audio books is the place you go to. <laughs> all right, that's awesome. Um, and Coin Gecko. Um, Cool, man. So, yeah, the best place to, to reach out to you oh. and all, all the stuff you're working on? Get Session. Go get this application. It's beautiful, free, two seconds, uh, add a contact, put C in there. That's me. I'm the only C on Session. It's an ONS. It's beautiful. Hit me up. Uh, otherwise, uh, jump in the Telegram community. Just type in Oxen. You'll find us, Oxen community. Um, and we are based in Melbourne. So if you're a really cool crypto person, you want to catch up, you want to show me something, you want to tell me about something, you want to pitch something, uh, let's go. Hit me up. Let's do it. Um, yeah, Twitter. So session. So, yeah, yeah. Good, good place for Twitter. 
<laughs> yeah, Twitter's okay. I engage, engage occasionally, but it's, it's just a bit, it's too much, you know, it's too much engagement, you know, so um, you can hit me up on Twitter and I'll show you my link, maybe put in the, put in the video maybe later. Yeah, yeah, for sure, sure. Um, cool. Anyway, it's awesome. been absolutely lovely, Kieran. I appreciate <laughs> you so much and I thank you for your time and I thank you for everything. You're, you're an actual legend in this space and, I, and <laughs> you're fantastic. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks, man. Really, really good catching up. We'll have to... Uh, actually, we're both in Melbourne, so we should catch up in person soon. <laughs> yeah, come on down. Come on down.